The next thing we want to tackle on this uh, on this presentation here, we're going to take a look at macros. Uh, macros are a they use the API built into SolidWorks. Um, it's a Visual Basic code that allows you to automate commands or things that you would normally do um, manually inside of SolidWorks um, it's with with just kind of a click of a button. So we're going to go ahead and uh, create one here just so we can see how this is done. Uh, I know for most people the idea of jumping into macros and this automation programming stuff seems really daunting. I'm going to show you how easy this can be. So first we'll go ahead and create a new part. This time let's do something, we'll do something a little different here. And we'll just go ahead and start modeling something. Doesn't really matter what. Something different at least. All right, we'll do a quick, oh, I guess I should close that. All right, easy enough. We'll do just a simple revolve here. All right, there's our little piece, whatever that's supposed to be. Now, we're going to go ahead and make a macro here. So to get to that, I'm just going to go ahead and type macro. And I can go ahead and hit that little eyeball again. It'll take me to where the macro tools are. And we'll turn on the macro toolbar. So right here, these are my macro buttons. So I've got five buttons really. There's run, stop, record, new macro, and edit macro. Obviously the stop is grayed out because I don't have a macro running yet. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and start here with the record option here. So what I wanna do is I wanna put a little hole in the top of here, a little drafted hole. We'll start with that. I'm gonna pre-select the face. I wanna make sure you do that. So pre-select the face, come over here and hit record. And we'll sketch, we'll put a circle right on top here. We'll make it one inch. There are features, we'll do an extrude cut and we'll make it one inch deep and we'll put some draft on it. We'll make it 10 degrees drafted. And then we'll hit the green check. And then we'll stop. All right, so this macro, we're gonna go ahead and just put it, we'll just put it right in here. We'll call this one inch, 10 degrees. Notice that I don't have any spaces in here. The dot SWP, the, the file name for macros, they don't want any spaces, so make sure you don't put spaces in there. Use under, um, underscores or just cram everything together. We'll hit save. Now, we'll come in here. I'm going to delete that feature. Delete the sketch. And I'm gonna play a macro. I'm gonna pick that face and we'll hit play. And we'll say this one right here, the one we just made, and we'll hit open. And it runs so fast it's hard to even see it, but that's it. It went ahead and ran through that macro for us and installed that uh, that little part right there. Now, what we did is basically a macro version of a library feature. Um, the difference being um, I don't have the same flexibility I might have with library features. I can't go in and make changes to it, right? I mean, it did create the feature, so I could come back after the fact and make changes, but I don't have configurations or anything like that. Um, so really, this probably isn't the best use case for macros, but it is a good place to start when we're learning how to do macros. So I'm gonna delete this one more time. And notice when I created that macro, I didn't move the mouse much. I kinda of had it where I wanted it to be. That's because when you create a macro, it's recording every single mouse movement that you make. So I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna do it badly. So I'm gonna pick the top face and I'll hit record. And we'll go to sketch and we'll pick sketch and we'll come over here and I want to go normal to it and we're going to go circle come out here and we'll go dimension All right notice I'm I'm intentionally being kind of annoying with how, how I'm moving on this one but that's okay um, so we've got that where we want it okay we'll accept it now we'll come in and we'll make a cut Give it the draft again. That looks about right. We'll hit the green check. All right, there's our macro. Nice little cut, and we'll stop it. 
All right, so now we'll call this bad. And we'll hit save. So now I'm gonna delete this feature one more time. And we're gonna pick the face, we're gonna hit play. We're gonna pick our bad one and we'll hit open. And it's doing all of this running around. Oh, and it failed. It got hung up because I had to type in the value there and I didn't know what to do with that. Beyond just that, let me show you what else is going on. When I go into the edit macro here, I'm gonna go ahead and this is the first one we made. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. This is the entire code for the macro, right? Super short. It's showing me the values I typed in, where I put them and so forth. Extremely tidy little macro right here. These are much more reliable because there's just less going on. It's harder to break this. If I go in and we look at that other one, we'll go edit and we'll look at the bad macro. This is the exact same feature with lines and lines and lines and lines of code because I kept moving the view around. Remember, the macro is recording every single thing I do on screen. And it's kind of no wonder that this thing failed, right? It's trying to do all of these steps every single time I hit the play button. So this is what you don't want to do. So typically when you make a macro, if you're going to do use the record functionality for macros, you're going to do it one time, critique yourself, make some changes, do it again, critique yourself until you kind of get it dialed. And then you'll want to test this on a couple of models because it may work great for one geometry, but it may struggle with another. So you really want to test these things out before you kind of push them out into, into the world and let other people try and use them. So let's go ahead and take a look at one more macro. Um, one that I think is a little bit more useful, and in fact, I kind of borrowed this from somebody else who was, um, had already created it because I thought it was so useful. I actually have this one. I use it all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a drawing. So I'm just going to grab the sheet metal box drawing here. And don't mind the fact that this is a terrible drawing. It's just for examples, uh, just for example sake. So I've got this drawing in here. Now let's say in my business I need to save a drawing, save a PDF, and save a DXF every single time I save one out, right? That's not uncommon. A lot of people have to do this. Well, we have a macro here that does exactly that. So I've, I've even made a little button for it, and I'll show you how we make the button. You can see as I hover over, where is it pointing to, right, on my hard drive? If this was a macro I wanted other people to use, I wouldn't want to put it on my hard drive. I'd want it so they could access it as well. But with one click, and I'll show you here, first dialog box that pops up says save as drawing successful way to go and it shows me where it saved that to give it another second saved as PDF successful it shows me where it saved it and then one more time saved as DXF successful it showed me where it put that it's done it saved all those folders out if I go to that location here you can see I've got the PDF as well as the DXF right here. So save both of those for me just now with one simple button. So let's take a look at that macro here. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit. And we'll go to my save DXF PDF macro right here. We'll hit open. This is the entire macro. That's really short. I'll let you kind of take a look here. So if you do want to copy this for yourself, do a quick screen capture of this. Um, and you can just literally type this thing in yourself and, and create it. Uh, but here's the actual code, basically. First thing it's doing, it says, hey, um, if there's no document pulled up, then this they won't even try and run the rest of the macro. It'll just end out the macro if there's no document. The set, second thing that comes up, it says, if um, there's a SOLIDWORKS drawing file, then it will work if there's uh, any kind of file type that isn't a SOLIDWORKS drawing file. Then it says this macro only works on drawings and then it ends the macro and stops. So if I tried to run this thing when I had a part file open, it would error out and just tell me that it only works on drawings. If there's a file open and the file's a drawing, um, th then it checks and says, hey, have you actually saved this before? So it, has this drawing been saved or is this brand new? This is kind of good sanity check for yourself because uh, it, it says, hey, if there's no name here, meaning I haven't saved it yet, <clears throat> it says, please save the file first and then try again. If 
you do not have a file name, you haven't saved it yet, and if you try to run a macro on something you haven't saved yet, you run the risk of potentially crashing the software, right? It's, it's not impossible. It's a pretty robust macro, but it could crash. So I wanna make sure that this has been saved first. Once all these have been satisfied, then it goes through the steps here. It, it tries to save out the SolidWorks drawing file, and that's what all this information is here. And if it worked, a little message pops up that says, saved as drawing successful, way to go. If it did not work, if for some reason it failed, then this will pop up and says, save as drawing failed, oh no, and then it gives me the error code number right here. <clears throat> Once that works, we move on to the PDF. Now, if you look at the code for PDF and DXF, it's almost identical. The only real difference right here is the string, the file name, uh, minus six, meaning it deletes the um, SLDPR, uh, uh, SLDDWG right here, and then replaces it with PDF. And this one deletes the PDF and replaces it with DXF. So it's just the last three names on the file extension. Um, same thing though, it's gonna pop up and say, save as PDF, successful, you did it. And save as PDF failed, what did you do? And then here's the error code. Finally, DXF, same thing. Uh, successful, yay, you win. And save as DXF failed. Hurry and fix it before the boss finds out. Error code, something, something. Um, these are obviously just kind of written for fun, um, but these can be coded to say anything you want. You literally just come in here and type um, whatever you want, and that's what the uh, message box will pop up with. Um, so these can be edited um, just like anything else. You can come in here, delete something, type something new in, and so forth. Now, if you're like me, whenever I look at writing code for something, which I don't do very often, um, I get intimidated when I see kind of the blank template and it, you know, it's just sort of, hey, you know, figure it out and go from there. What I typically do is I will start with using the record functionality. I will record the steps, create sort of a template, I guess, of the macro I want to use. And then I will edit it and go through and cut out the sections I don't want and keep tweaking it until it does what I want it to do reliably. That I find to be the easiest way for me to create macros because I don't live and breathe this stuff every day. I do it once in a while. That's typically how I go about doing this. Um, a couple things I do want to show you. If you do want to add a little macro button like I've got here, we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and just do that. I'm going to go hit the little drop down here and we'll say customize. I'm going to go into my commands right here. Scroll down until you find macro. And then one of these icons right here says new macro button. I can click and drag that and just add that to my command manager. So it's always on my command manager. And then this pops up. This is asking me for which macro do you want. So you hit the little search button. I happen to have a couple of macros saved in here. Um, so I'll just pick the same one again. And we'll hit open. This is the macro it's going to run. The tool tip, this is basically the name it's going to give it. You can make this say anything you want. Um, I'm gonna have it delete this afterward. Uh, the little icon, you can choose an image. If you look closely, you probably can't see it. This little image is uh, an automate button that I've got on there. So this little button right here is what I'm using currently. Um, one thing to point out, uh, you need to use a .bmp or a bitmaps image um, in order to create a, a custom image for the button in the, on the macro. Uh, it's easy to do any image you find that's a PNG or a JPEG. You can just open and paint and then just save out as a bitmap image. It's not a big deal. Um, but you do have to use a bitmap image. So once you have one picked, that's the image that's going to get used. And you hit OK. And you hit OK. And then there's your new button. So when I run this one, again, it just does the same thing. It, it fires up and runs that same macro. So pretty easy to do. Um, if you add a bunch of macros up here that you don't like, the only way you can pull things off of your command manager is holding the Alt key and click and drag it off. That's how you delete things from your command manager. So that's the basic basics of using a macro. Um, there's a bunch of free information online that you can get to if you want to get more kind of down the rabbit hole of making these macros. Uh, there's a bunch on our website. We've even got some kind of gurus at the office. If that's something that you want to get into, we've got some people that can help you out with that if you need to.